Live from Los Angeles, California, welcome to Good Morning La La Land. I'm Dr. Aaron, and we have a very special guest today, Sam from Joe and the Juice, who we're going to talk with in just a moment. And I'm Jessica Moyer. Good morning, La La Land. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We are streaming daily, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now on Periscope. Right, so we have an incredible show in store for you. So if you are looking to have a community that comes together, fulfill their dreams, you don't wanna miss this show. If you want to learn the seven habits of happy people, you don't wanna miss this show. And if you are ready for transformation in the news, you definitely don't wanna miss this show. So it's our, a hashtag thoughtful Thursday. Right? Very thoughtful. Yes, <laughs> and we have some very exciting special guests today. Not only do we have Sam from Joe and the Juice. Thank you, by the way. Double fisting this morning. We've got some really exciting guests in the back studio with Rob. Good morning. We have got Maria Felipe, author of Live Your Happy in Spanish and in English. She's basically saying how to get out of your own way and find the love within. Hmm. Mm. How did she know that needed to be like my truth today? <laughs> That's uh, so thank you. So thoughtful. And especially in these times, we're going to do a year in the review mm -hmm. of what's happening in the news and in journalism with Ken LaCourt, formerly of Fox News. We're so excited to have you in the studio today. So right back there. What mm -hmm. you're doing to change the face of journalism and really bring us some true news. So thank you so much for being here this morning. And we're excited to get to you later in the show. And so right now we have a very special guest that's brought us not only coffee but juice incredible juice sam from joe and the juice how are hi you guys hi i'm good how are you guys <laughs> fantastic it's cheers nice thank you for joining us here yeah. on this early morning absolutely so, so oh you're fine you okay. leave it down there we've got technical things <laughs> yeah, flying around back stuff. here <laughs> so we want to hear the story we want to hear your story and we want to hear joe and the juice so story. joe and the juice is a denmark-based company we're in 14 countries we have about i think 212 stores now worldwide we are a nutrition based incredible i mean yeah. let's talk about that it's from insane. one store in copenhagen mm -hmm. to now 15 years later, 14 countries, 212 locations. Yeah, wow. worldwide. It is like a global fan yeah, at this point. Yeah, juicers all over the country. It's really cool because like I have friends in other countries that we have just met by both being juicers and just connected through our Facebook groups. Where we, I mean, we have the same job, we have the same ethic, same passion, same creativeness. But I got, I got to meet this guy, Joe. Who is this guy? Just Joe is. <laughs> everyone who makes this mistake. And Joe is for coffee. It's coffee and juice. That's what we're all about. I'm joking, but yeah. yeah. And right now we have a special uh, glimpse of the West Hollywood location on Melrose. Right. That's one of our. It's actually our first LA locations. So we have uh, three more opening in that area. Um, it's a smaller store compared to some of ours in San Francisco. I actually work in San Francisco. That's my home. I'm from LA though. Um, but yeah, so we're trying to push now our LA markets and our San Diego. So markets. we went there yesterday. Right. Yeah. And we had a great time. There, yeah. We walked in. I'd never been there ever. Oh, really? And it's aesthetically gorgeous. Yeah. Everything was. It just was so LA. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so even LA. the art on the wall, the branding. I mean, it seems like there's such purpose behind it. Yeah, it's a, I've only been with the company since April, and when I was first introduced to the company, I was brought into a store in San Francisco, and it's twice the size of that Melrose oh, really? store, mm -hmm. and I was just blown away. The music, the ambience, the vibe. I couldn't tell who was working there and who was just this cool person, people that are in the store, because we don't wear uniforms, so. No, you're all so yeah. cool. When you came up, I was like, does this guy work there? <laughs> you're too cool. So what do they have to do to get you, like, you're, you're a true, like, you're an advocate, right? So you guys live in corporate housing, is that correct? Uh, yes, yeah, so because we're expanding into a new market, which is America, we set up corporate housing for our elite juicers that are going to open up a market. So our elite juicers are people that are passionate about the company. They have huge ambience. They're very uh, community focused type people. Mm -hmm. We love giving back. We actually have a program where we sponsor kids in Benin, which is in West Africa. Okay. Every store we open, mm -hmm. we sponsor a kid. So we're very, very community based. We build families in our stores. Uh, it's truly like a brotherhood. Here. It's yes. beyond right? juicing. Mm -hmm. You're creating a culture. Right, 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 right. More than a brotherhood, we're a family because we, we don't like saying brother because it's kind of like 
uh, only guy focused. Right. Okay. Or, Thank you. We like Thank our female you. juices. Right. Yeah. I'm all about that. We're a family. But I mean, so I don't really drink alcohol. I don't really like do much other than I'm a workaholic in my life. But coffee is my drug yeah, of choice. Me too. So I gotta say, like, how can you not bond? Like working together, drinking coffee all day. But okay, so what sets? I mean, obviously you guys have like a. You guys have a culture, you have right. an environment, you have a family. Mm -hmm. Is that, what is the belief? Like if there's a belief system behind Joe? What our belief is, is we want to make business savvy young adults who necessarily don't want to go maybe the college route or they don't necessarily have the means to go the college route. So like inner city kids or kids that have just struggled in life, maybe like a foster care kid or something like that. We want to bring them an opportunity where they can grow as not only an individual, but as in, in a business environment. I so we don't look at age as a, a factor when it comes to who we look at as managers. Thank you, another yeah. one. <laughs> well, so, Sam, I'm curious, how did it make you grow personally? Uh, me personally, coming from a military background, I had kind of um, a strict mindset towards life and an outlook that was like a little bit more raw because I spent six years in the military. But they just really introduced like what it is to be a family and like, like I, I just don't know how to explain it, but they just have such a family oriented. Wow. Like just with everything, like I could have a bad day and like my regional manager will come in and he'll be the guy that'll be like to lift me up. And I know that like, he's more stressed out than me. His name is Frederick, by the way. I just want to say hi, Fred. <laughs> Morning, Fred. <laughs> what I also find very interesting about the culture that is Joe and the Juice is that there's a casting involved. Right, there's right, a show off. Right. You even said it was called scouting. Yes. Wow, so right? So what we do is, is um, we don't necessarily like the business model of having people send in their resumes mm -hmm. and then we cipher through a bunch of papers. That's so 1999. Yeah, we can't see who the person <laughs> is. We can't see what they're passionate about. We can't see what their niches are, okay. what they're like, what they want to do with their life. So what we do is we send out normal clothes because we don't have uniforms, mm -hmm. individuals in our company, and we go out in the streets and we look and we talk to people about their passions. Oh, we cool. talk to them about what they want to do with their lives. And if they fit, into what we're trying to do, then we try to bring them on board as fast as possible. That's awesome. And you are passionate about the juicy crate. Tell us what this special So this one is called the Guardian, and what it is is it's carrot, sea buck, thorn, and You lost me at sea buck. Yeah. <laughs> what you is had a, me at juice, I have no idea. Yeah, what is a sea buck thorn? A sea buck thorn is a berry native to Denmark, and it's high in vitamin C, so it's like if you're sick, this would be a great juice this for you. This one's so good. But because it's high in vitamin C, it has a bit of a sour consistency. Ooh, I love it. Yeah, it's really good. I and always like one? it because the colors. So this is the Prince of Green, and this is the mm. Stress Down. This one is What strawberry. were you trying to say? I didn't know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's intuitive too, OK? Yes, He's psychic, OK? Uh, so this Stress Down is apple, ginger, and strawberries. And what it is is the ginger is supposed to help your digestion through the day. And then the I like the like ginger. A, the ginger like is nice doing that. a fruit mm -hmm. energy boost. I so really love it. If you're someone like me that's trying to kick coffee, then ginger and apple, right. and like the high fruit. I'm keeping mine down to energy. like I'm trying to have like just coffee just in the morning and maybe one after you know early evening or something like that. That's like cutting down. <laughs> if you're like me, you just double fist all day. <laughs> here's your gel. Here's your juice. Good morning, La La Land. So, so where can people find? Obviously, they can find you here. Right on Melrose. Mm -hmm. uh, we have locations going up on San Vicente Boulevard. Uh, we're gonna have a Pasadena location. Oh, cool. Um, on South Lake, and we're going to be on Third Street and in Abbott Kinney. So all around right. really the Santa Monica area so great. to start off. So this is all what we love about LA mm -hmm. because people just look at it like it's this la la kind of hip weird yeah. people, right? And this is these are the stories that we love. We mm -hmm. love that it's actually people are fulfilling their dreams. They're actually creating new companies and ways of doing things that the whole world's looking at. So we're so happy that you're here. Yeah, really, yes. really glad to be here. Celebrating the community and contributing to it. We're really excited to feature the owner and founder of Joe and the Juice, Casper, in the next issue of Focus Magazine as well. Right? So next, uh, Focus Magazine, we will have them featured in there and we have to take we have to go to our second segment oh so i just want to say thank you so no much for your nice time you yeah. we're loving the coffee you. and we're looking juices. forward to uh, many more um mornings with uh some coffee Enjoy with you guys juice. right and, yeah and my afternoon i'll yeah. see you there at <laughs> yeah, right? so stay tuned you guys as we have our beloved rob mack back in the house for seven habits of happy people people hopeful people <laughs> so stay tuned you guys we'll be right back i'm dr aaron i'm rob mack and i'm jessen royer
Monday through Friday, we are going to be streaming to you live, Los Angeles. America's first live streaming daily talk show. At 9 a.m. Pacific time on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Oh, and we have a sexy show for you today. We have got Will, Leanne, and Gabe in the house. Let's Hello. go back up. Hi! Hey. Talked to four beautiful, intelligent, conscious women. Clearly, I was miserable the entire time. <laughs> She has a TV show similar to your guys. Ellen. Yes! Woo! Yes! Woo! Yes! Woo! The little peck. Come on. I'm also so bad for Jess. We're, li we're live too, for the, the people viewing. Yeah. For the people viewing. Wow! Yes! Wow! M I C K E Y M O U S E Club Mickey Mouse on Good Morning La La Land. We are streaming to you live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Happy holidays. It's gonna be a good, good morning. Good morning, La La, La Land. Land. Five, six, six, seven, eight. eight. We, we are, are the Musketeers, and we proudly wear our ears. We mousing, we mousing, we mousing. M I C K E Y M O U S E Club Mickey Mouse. Good morning, La La Land. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. This is all about seven habits of happy people. I want to know about this. You got to tell me all about that. I know. Well, we've got the expert, Maria Felipe, we in do. the back. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk to her about it. Um, uh, and you're an expert. I yeah. am an expert. We, Excited we about this book that we're going to find out about. In Spanish right? and English. Yeah, it's yep. amazing. So give us a rundown. We pulled a, an article. Yes. It's uh, What is the article from? Uh, the article is originally from Pursuit of Happiness organization. Bringing the science of happiness to life. So this is oh. some science backing around the seven yeah, habits. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, the pro, there's a program at University of Pennsylvania, actually, that's focused on applied positive psychology, which is like a 15-year-old science that's all about how to live your happiest life ever, mm. right? And so they study the there's happiest people in the world. There's actually a science behind that? There is actually a science behind it, and I have a degree in it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna play a little bit. I'm gonna play a little bit of the devil's advocate on this because as a doctor of divinity, of course, uh -huh. uh, like I read through the seven, and we'll talk about the seven. Yeah. And I agree with it, but I just want to say that I have a little bit of a hard time with the word pursuit of happiness. Yeah. In that, I believe that you know there's a law that's what we resist persists. Yes. So if I only want to be happy, then I'm gonna resist when I'm not feeling happy, yeah. and in that resistance, I'm gonna feel you know it's going to persist. I I don't so I'm, I'm always about I'm always about pursuit of fulfillment. Yeah. But I get that it's like it kind of. Or even even I think there's another way of saying it too, which is simply just tapping into the happiness already inside of you, or mm -hmm. tapping into the fulfillment already inside of you. I think you're absolutely right. When you pursue or chase happiness, you're always putting it out ahead of you, outside of you, in the future, and doesn't exist in any right. of those places. It's right, something that's right, always yeah. accessible now inside yourself. I have a question for you, yeah, Rob, because so on. many people have said, where do you see yourself in five years? Yes. What do you want for yourself next year, five years, 10 years? And I always say, I want to be happy. Mm, love that. Mm. Yeah, you and John Lennon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. the same thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, so Aaron, but maybe to your point that that's being fulfilled, but I do feel like I am on a constant pursuit of that. Yeah. Not that I'm not satisfied or grateful for where I'm at now, yeah. but for me there's this expectation of the goals that I have for myself down the line yeah. will inevitably give me that happiness. Yeah, that's Am I off a, on that? Uh, yeah, that, for sure. Oh, you are. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I love you very much and yes. I, just And I know that from personal experience, we know that from science, that generally no matter what we accomplish, achieve, or acquire, we're not happier for it. Now, if you live below no. a level of subsistence where you can't pay your bills and you can't eat, you don't have shelter, it matters very much. 
that additional dollar um, or the additional <laughs> achievement. But yeah, for the most part, um, <laughs> things don't make us happy. Future doesn't make us happy. We make ourselves happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Damn. I'm breaking it down right now. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. So let's hear the seven. We got to get the comments yeah. of happy people. Yeah. Yep. So one, I think, which is the most important for me personally, is um, some kind of spiritual path or some mm -hmm. kind of spiritual endeavor, some kind of yeah. spiritual pursuit. Um, now, that's different for everybody. And the way I would define spirituality in that context is a connection to something larger than yourself. Or your higher self. Or your higher self, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a pretty profound one. For lots of folks, it's just the community, mm -hmm. the spiritual community itself. It can be anything. Yeah, that yeah, provides right? a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. happiness boost. So. This so that, juice is making me feel spiritual. Is it? Right? <laughs> What's yeah. in your juice? <laughs> you got something special in there. Some kind of special berry from yeah. Denmark, Here's apparently. Here's a list wow. if you're, if you're yeah. the I'm next article. Oh, wait, there's so many. Right? So, yeah. I mean, no, so um, the number one, the relationship. So number one was the relationships express your heart. And it reminds me of that Harvard yes. study, that 75 year study of, yes. of that uh, study where they found that it came down to good relationships was the, n the number one. Yeah, that's such a good point. That. George Valiant mm -hmm. did a study, um, Harvard, right? He's, and he followed men over the course of decades. And he basically discovered that the quality of your relationships is a reflection of how happy you are, right? And so. And it's not about having a lot of relationships. I love you guys. That's, yeah. what I know. That's so why you're so I'm happy, really right? Happy, okay? It's because of Jess and I. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or just our presence. And the coffee. And the coffee so, helps. You know, yeah, yeah. Right? So relationships are very important. And one thing to remember about relationships too, and uh, we're going to talk to Maria about this as well, mm -hmm. is that one of the most one of the best things you can do in terms of your happiness relationship is focus on the very best in the other person. So the best relationships consist of two happy people who are single mm -hmm. and happy first. Right, and then they're able to see the best of it within mm -hmm. each other, despite what the other may be showing them. So right. it's this positive illusion effect. Um, it's very powerful. <laughs> yeah. So this, this list of seven gets into like a list of like a thousand, yeah, it's a thousand things. things. Yeah. 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 Well, number two is really interesting. So you you mentioned acts of kindness and yeah. cultivating kindness. Yeah. So it's interesting because that relationship works both ways. So the happier you are, the more charitable and kind you tend to be. Mm -hmm. So you find people in the street. The mean people tend to be very unhappy inside, mm -hmm. um, but it also works the other way that when you're kind to people, it tends to increase your happiness. So when you're charitable, when you give blood, when you do things that are nice for other people, right. it actually boosts your happiness. So it's a positive upward Like spiral. attracts like. That's mm -hmm. right, exactly. So number one was relationships. Mm -hmm. Number two is ki acts of kindness. Number three is exercise. exercise. Right, so we all know that. Um, 30 minutes a day is the equivalent to taking anti-anxiety oh, or wow, anti-depressant. Right? Uh -huh. right? Is it really? Yeah, literally. It's like it's like as profound as a pro as taking Prozac. Mm -hmm. So There's you, no you question. definitely want to exercise mm -hmm. if you can. 30 minutes, you don't have to go crazy. Yep. Yeah. Says uh, exercise and well-being. Keep moving and eat well. And then number four is flow. Wow. I'm all about that. Flowing, huh? You got a little freestyle? Let's definitely, hear the freestyle. definitely feeling the flow. Rob's always well? about being in the flow. Love. I am about being in the flow. He is. He is. <laughs> I think that's one of his greatest sure. masteries for sure. He's uh, kind of like whatever. That. But you, you guys are very you much can come to me. You know? <laughs> yeah, okay, so if you're just tuning in for yeah. the first time at Morning La La Land, what do you mean the flow? Yeah. Like so the, the boob falling out? That's how people get in the flow, so I'm sure. <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's a, about being in the zone. So as an athlete, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a basketball player, you can hit 13 shots in a row without thinking, without blinking. It just comes so naturally and so easily to you. Or if you're a writer, you just have a flow of creative ideas or whatever you do, you can be in a spot, this sweet spot, where life shows up in very effortless, easy, and enjoyable mm -hmm. ways for you. Mm -hmm. And it's an energetic kind of thing. So for the moments when you're out of the flow, because I yeah. certainly have them, and you're like, man, this mm -hmm. is like hitting every red light for me yeah. in my life right Talk now. About that. How do you get yourself back in that? Like, is there a switch you can flip? Yeah. Well, so in LA, you just wait for the holidays. And you get all green lights. <laughs> okay, all green right. lights. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's different for everybody. Um, it's interesting because I know this little, and this is how easy it is. I know this four year old girl, a friend of mine, her daughter um, basically read like a happiness book and, and came up with this idea to like create a list of happiness, that, like things that cause her to feel happy mm. easily and effortlessly. Mm -hmm. oh, I like chocolate, I like playing with my Barbies. I like so juice. She, I like juice. <laughs> so she created a list, and whenever yeah. she's not feeling the flow, she goes to her list, picks something off the list, and does it. Yeah. So you just want to have. Mm. A it's also of... understanding your genius. Like there's mm. personality tests. Like I'm not a detail person, so if I do a lot of details, I'm not in the flow. Yes. I'm more of a visionary, and so I have to stay up in the creative factor. Yes. And knowing where your you have to know yourself to know where your flow is, right? You make a great point because scientifically, the way we describe flow is it's that place where the challenge at hand 
slightly exceeds your skill or ability to mm. meet that challenge, right? So if you can kind of think of it that way, now it helps if you're doing something you enjoy, you know. So if you're doing right? something you hate and you're skill and you're just not very skillful, <laughs> you're like I'm happy doing yes, this crappy thing. Not gonna work. Okay, so number five was what you said: spiritual engagement mm. and meaning. Discover yes. meaning. We know that meaning is so important. Yes. Absolutely. What's your? I someone said it great one time. They said you have to have a cold shower, mm. like er, meaning that what's going to get you out of bed even when you don't feel like it. Wow. Like what's going to be the meaning? Cold shower is not that, ever going to get me out of bed. <laughs> what's going to be that? that but what's shower, that going to like be that wakes yeah, you up each day? That's like okay, forget it. I don't feel that great, or I'm not that into it. But you go, oh yeah, I, I this meaning like a purpose I, in your life. I absolutely love that, and I think it's so worth thinking about. You and I have talked about. That too, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you wake up in the morning? Like, why do you live? Like, why wake up? Why get out of bed? Why go to work? <laughs> why pay the bills? Yeah, it certainly helps, right? right? It certainly helps. Well, number six, you mentioned it being strengths and virtues, discovering and using your personal strengths. So yeah. I suppose, Aaron, that's like understanding yeah. your genius. Had that wrong one. That was another one. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> right? Oh, no, yeah. Totally right. Your strengths and virtues. Yeah. I definitely know my, my weaknesses. And I think that it's good to go ask your friends and people, what are my strengths? What are my yeah. weaknesses? And it's not like you have to get great at your weaknesses. Sometimes you delegate your weaknesses. No, no totally. In <laughs> fact, that's the best advice ever. Right? Se- seriously, the most extraordinary company companies and individuals, they outsource, delegate, reduce, or eliminate their weaknesses, mm-hmm. and they focus exclusively on their strengths. I do that with laundry. I'm like, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, yeah. I mix the colors, I can't do it. So <laughs> <laughs> wow. Maria, later in the show, is even going to tell us how to get out of our own way. Oh, yeah. Or she get out deep. of, like, the laundry. Oh, feeling, right? Right? Yeah. There's an art to it, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Banishing fear and encountering it, love. It's so interesting, because Maria's a good example of that, and I think I know I'm sure we've all had a little bit of a challenge, like deciding what you want to do with your life. I think, Jez, you were pretty clear at like a young age. But most of us have had a little challenge with that. And Maria's done so many different things over the course of her life. Mm-hmm. Um, and now she's in a place where she's focusing, you know, sort of on happiness, on the spiritual path. And it'd be interesting to ask her about that mm-hmm. journey because I think mm-hmm. sometimes it's hard to both identify your strengths and then focus on just a couple. Right. Well, and, and you know, that leads us perfectly to the seventh habit, yeah. which is having a positive mindset, remaining mm-hmm. optimistic, optimistic, mindful, and full of gratitude. You got to focus on the sunny side of the road. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so on that note, you guys, we have to uh, sign off on this segment yeah. because we have two amazing guests oh coming gosh. up. Incredible guests. So uh, one Yes, yeah, stay tuned. We up. are going to go back in the studio and do a year in review 2017 highlights with Ken LaCourt of the LaCourt Report when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> This is Jack. His mother didn't save his childhood artwork. She just threw it all away like it was garbage. If only his mother had Archive. Archive is the easiest and fastest way to chronologically store your child's art. Snap a picture, tag it, and store it safely in our cloud. Then share it with friends and family. Even turn it into a calendar, mug, or your very own printed book. Oh, you were gonna make one yourself? Yeah, that's what his mom said. (laughs) Download the Archive app now and help us save art. Archive, available now on the App Store. Hey, Dr. Drew here, and I am on the HEAL advisory board. I got involved with this organization because it's the answer to our healthcare problem. Listen to me. You go to urgent care, you go to emergency room, you are paying for all that equipment, all that infrastructure, you're wasting time, you're exposing yourself to sick people. All you got to do is go to HEAL.com or get the HEAL app at HEAL.com, get that HEAL app. And you can have a doctor wherever you are. It's $99 if you don't have insurance, though most insurances cover it. It's the most effective way to get the care you're looking for and the most cost efficient. $99 all in. That's it. And you get a board certified physician to show up wherever you are, your home, your work, whatever it is, 8A to 8P, seven days a week, including holidays. And that board certified individual, that licensed professional, is going to just be paying attention to you and focusing on you and using his or her judgment to take care of your needs in that moment. Go to Heal. Check it out. You'll see what I'm saying. You'll see what I'm talking about. 
Hi, this is Jennifer Eddy, and I'm here with Spa Girl Cocktails today. We're thrilled to be here with Empowerista and Girl Talk Network at Unita and El Segundo to help support and empower women, the community. We have two flavors with Spa Girl Cocktails, Pear and Spa. Those are our signature cocktails. They're low calorie and gluten free, all natural, nothing added. You can find us at BevMo and Total Wine in all of your communities. We're thrilled to be here in, with Focus Magazine today in, the, in their December issue. Hello everyone, I'm Joyce Gerard, creator of the Joyce Miracle Elixir Collection. And I'm happy to say that it's the only collection out there that is not gonna have any harsh chemicals, free of parabens, free of sulfates, free of sodium, free of sodium chloride, absolutely cruelty free because for me that is super important and it's made right here in the USA and it's the only line that is going to deliver you the best antioxidants vitamins fatty acids minerals straight from mother nature I've infused my entire line with buriti maracuya moringa and argon so you have the buriti which is the tree of life you have the argon which is literally liquid gold you have the maracuya which is the richest source of vitamin C and you have the moringa, which is the richest superfood in the world. So I've combined all these yummy ingredients from mother nature and delivered them straight to you, straight to your strands, straight to your face in all my products. That's the base of it. And the most important thing is that everything is made with love right here at home in USA, straight for you. And the reason they book me and keep me is because it's more than just training. It's, it's, gen, it's just authentic. And so I think that's one thing I realized that I had my whole life was will. I'm so determined to get to where I want to go. I'm not going to let nothing stop me. Not even myself. Right? And I try to tell my clients and people, it's all a mindset. You know, Absolutely. you've got to really want it. They said, you can change anything. But before you change anything, you got to change it in your mind first. Just because I always say, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. I'm Eden Sassoon and I own two Pilates studios, Eden by Eden Sassoon Pilates. And to be quite honest, I hate socks, but my girlfriend Sally just created a line mantra socks. And to me, at Pilates, you cannot get on my machine without socks. But now you can get on my machine with the intention. Today, I have be love. To me, that means a lot. But also, when you buy a pair of these socks, one pair gets donated to a homeless shelter. And that is something, that's really what matters, to be quite honest. It's not just about the sock. It's about the intention. It's about what you're giving back and how you're paying it forward. And so for that, Sally, I thank you. And I love mantra socks. Hi guys, I'm Joyce Gerard and I support my beautiful friend Sally with her mantra socks. Look how cute they are. Be love is my favorite. So go get them, run and get them on amazon.com. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are so honored to have Ken LaCourt here today. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. How Good are morning. you? Good. So Ken was a senior vice president of Fox News. Holy cow. And now you have, Ken, your, your own news station. You have a list. You have all kinds of things. Tell us what is going on. So um, I was with Fox News for, for almost 20 years. Wow. Um, um, loved that. It was part of a, of a kind of a revolutionary new thing that was out there. It was mm -hmm. controversial. It was fun. Um, on the journalism side more than the opinion side on that. And uh, we were always very proud of our journalism. And, and I still think they do a great job on that. Uh, I was tight with Roger Ailes when that whole uh, thing mm. came and, and that senior management blew up. I was one of the guys that got blown out of that. And, uh, and it was one of the better things that happened to me. Mm. Uh, Why is that? Uh, part of it is... is, is is it was at the point of my life at age 50 where it was like I, I'd always wanted to start my own deal. I, 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 
I've wanted to be an entrepreneur in, in the news industry for a long time. And when you're at that level of corporate politics and corporate, uh, just corporate news, it's kind of hard to, to, to make that jump. And so getting a little bit of nudge out the door, the door mm -hmm. helped it. And it just happened to be at the same time that the news media in America is kind of imploding. And, 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 and I think that it's, it's a bad thing for the country, what's happening in, in, in the news world. And I think it's an opportunity for, for a new business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy because I got your newsletter today, right. which is really an overview of 2017. And I was blown away with how great and how broken down it really was. So that's that's just kind of what we're what we're doing. So so we're launching a, a product that, that in probably about three or four months, which is gonna be kind of a hybrid between a news entity and if you created Facebook from scratch to deliver news. Mm. In other words, Facebook no is, 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 is <laughs> Facebook is, is, is right now the biggest deliverer of news in the country, even though mm. they don't have a journalist, they don't have a reporter, they don't have, a, uh, they don't have editors. They, they, they've created a great platform to let people come together. Mm -hmm. But my question uh, is, is it real news? I think right, most of it Russian. is, and that's that's the that's the difference. Is Facebook was really created to to let you see your old girlfriend and watch her photos, or see your friends, or see your cousins mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. on vacation or whatnot. I thought it was just for kind of, likes. What is <laughs> we like all that. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's become so hugely popular that it does everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, people get news there. People get all you know. It's it's become you know a, almost a fabric of life. But for delivering a pure news product, that's a really really good question because anybody can pop a news story up. Oh, here's something from whatever.com. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I said, oh, I just got something mm -hmm. from from uh, uh, usinvestigativejournalism.com, nobody would have any idea if that was a serious organization yeah. or some schmo with a, with a, with a WordPress page that right. looks great. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem with, with, with journalism in America. And so w we have some tweaks on that in the sense that We'll have on, on this product news from everywhere, from NBC and CNN and Fox and all of that, as well as some of our own original journalism that, that, that we'll do. But we'll also have a team of editors who bring that stuff in so we can keep out the fake, the crazy bias, the, 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 the you know, the, you can do a lot of different things like mm -hmm. that. And, and unlike a news organization that, you know, even at a, even at a massive one like Fox or NBC, mm -hmm. you only really work on 50 stories a day. And only, you only <laughs> for, you know, for an organization that has thousands of people, sure. that's, yeah. that's, but, 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 you know, people's, but, but one of the cool things about, about Facebook or any of these, of these, of these kind of news platforms is you might have such a radically different concept of what you find interesting in news mm -hmm. versus you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know some people who just love to get into the politics world and, yeah. and the, the economic numbers and this and that. And I know other people who are like, I don't want any of that. And, and I want... You know, I want the, the lighter fare or I want entertainment news. And so when you're pulling it in from hundreds and hundreds of sources, you can you can give people kind of a little bit more of what they're what they're looking for. So you're offering news that's almost like tailored to what somebody might be looking for or interested so, in? You know, you always try to, you know, at, at, at a Fox when you're running, you know, we get a billion page views a month on our on our, wow. on our, on our, on our Yeah, It was a lot. Wow. Mind blowing. So every morning though, you, you try to sit down and say, okay, let's let's make this mortgage board look good. Okay, so we have to have the important news here and then we have to have sports down here and we have to have this there this is a, a little bit different in the sense that it will be tailored per person so wow. it, we can literally that. track and, and Facebook does that I mean that's why people like get so addicted to Facebook yeah. <laughs> yes. right? Exactly. So, you, but you want what you know you want the things you want but there's also stuff that's like even though you didn't know that you wanted to hear about an explosion in Tempe mm -hmm. you also want to hear about that too so it's it's how so do it's, you it's, want it's, your news Asking about Ooh. Ooh. Not not <laughs> exactly. um, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I have particular tastes. I mean, I, I, I liked following the DC, the DC politics things. That's my sport. Sports can't stand. I just have no interest in sports. Didn't get into my genes. Uh, it just the, when the players were kneeling on the field, that was the only time I cared about football. Right. Mm -hmm. Just because that was then a political issue. Mm -hmm. I totally uh, get you. Just totally. Get you. But, some, but, but but you know, my brother-in-law's got you know he, he goes to work with his Ram right. shirt on. Mm -hmm. So so um, so I want it to be tailored to me. Look, we've got a couple issues going on. One is the fakeness of news going mm -hmm. on. And the other, and, and this is really bad, is is just how how how. The major media has become so biased and in their political camps. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to CNN, you know, an average, not crazily political person will look at CNN and it looks like the Democratic National Convention. I mean, you, you can't, I mean, it's just like 
they spend all day thumping Trump over the head. You go to Fox News and you don't see that. They're still thumping Hillary more than they're, they're thumping Trump. So, so part of it is I don't want to dive too much into, into a biased world. I want to see a little bit, but I don't want to be... I don't want it to be so focused on just the things that I want. I want to see things that I might not agree with or, or things that I might not have heard otherwise. The other issue is, is it's dumb. There's just a lot of dumb, I mean, so one of the, so, so find myself out of a job, looking at doing the last kind of big business thing in, in, in my life and took a lot of time saying, one of the big questions that I had was, how did we get from the days of yellow journalism mm. in the late 1800s, early 1900s, where you know we all saw that and they, they were hawking all this stuff? What do you mean yellow journalism? So yellow journalism was was a phrase that was that was brought up. It was kind of among the newspapers in the Hearst days. This again, this was the late 1800s, early 1900s. There were a lot of newspapers around, and they all kind of got into this 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 making up news, hardcore, kind of like what it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's becoming the last year. Uh, um, it's, it's known as kind of like the worst days of journalism because they, they, they would just often just over overplay things beyond a point of ridiculousness. Mm -hmm. And I said, how did we get from that to Back like when we, when I grew up, it was the LA Times, and yeah, they had their little, they had their political biases and whatnot, but but you believed them. They weren't making things up, and a lot of it, what what it came down to, and I figured out was how news is distributed and and what are the economic incentives behind it. Mm -hmm. So, in 1880, the way that you sold the newspapers, you had a kid on the on the corner with 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 the newspapers themselves screaming out the headlines. Mm -hmm. Whoever had the most salacious headline sold wow. the most amount of yeah. amount, yeah. amount of newspapers. There was there was mm -hmm. there was a lot of that. And and so so that actually didn't really start to change around until the early 1900s and a lot of it was a guy named Adolph Oaks who just bought a fledgling New York Times. And they said we're going the opposite opposite way. Um, and and they, they did serious journalism. They they stopped doing that, and people started to gravitate towards that. The other aspect was people started moving to the suburbs and buying subscriptions. Cool. Well, once I have you as a subscri subscriber, I don't have to sell that that hard. So you flash forward now to now, with Facebook mm -hmm. and social media being the primary driver of news. Okay. Not only does every newspaper have to compete, every single headline competes. Mm -hmm. And so that's why. When you look at something, you have a hard time believing those headlines because they're just made to make you click. And whether it's clickbait, whether it's it's appealing super hard to your political biases, yeah. or or uh, or or in some instances, it's it's and and the, the fake news guys. The only reason why fake news, the real fake news, uh, you know, I mean, like really really fake news, made stuff up, is because they they could make enough money on Facebook. Because if they said Melania is pregnant, right. people click on that. And they've got their penny at that yeah. point. Yeah. They already, mm -hmm. when you went to the page, just realized, oh, okay, you got me. Uh, they already made their penny, and if they could do that enough on Facebook, they they could make mm -hmm. money. So, do you see a shift there then, to, to, in terms of the psychology of the population, where folks are much more interested in less of the dr sort of dramatized fake news and more interested in getting sort of the facts and more interested in traditional journalism? I don't know. Yeah. That's a really good question because a lot of times we all say we want certain things. Totally. We say, yeah. oh, yeah. All right, man, yeah. I, I wish I could have a big salad for dinner. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And you're Yeah, and all of a sudden there's a, there's a fried cheeseburger on yeah. there. Um, I think that the average person now realizes that there is a crazy um, ideological divide that they that they're not getting the full story when they go to mm -hmm. their to their silo. I think that there's an unease amongst peop uh, many people because they, they don't know what's real. I, I was speaking at a, at a, at a conference and this, this, you know, this gal comes, she's 22 years old, she's a college student, she's bright, and she said, you know, I, I click around and I see things, how do I know who to trust? Wow. And you know, I basically said, well, you know, when you've lived 20 years, you realize that, okay, the American spectator is coming from this kind of a thing, or should I trust them or not? But living an extra 20 years was a really crappy answer to that, mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and it was and it really bothered me by the fact that you've got people who, who want it. So, I, I don't. I, I think that most people are still kind of going to that stuff, but I think that it's, and I wouldn't say the ship's starting to turn, but I think that a lot of people are. are for the first time saying, mm, I'm uncomfortable mm -hmm. about yeah. it. And, do you think that, that and I think there's a market there. That's encouraging. Is a market, you know, in America or is this something that's happening worldwide? That's a good question. I think it's happening worldwide, but I, but I haven't traveled in the last year. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. I'm mainly immersed in, uh, immersed in, 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 in American. So, I, I don't so, know the answer to that. So the goal is, is this, probably, so. probably though, because I would assume that the, that the Facebook 
dot Brazil is probably the biggest purveyor of news mm -hmm. in, in Brazil. But so the goal is to have a place like Facebook. I can come on. I can go. Okay. Where, where you know that a everything's been been if not vetted story for story, but it's been pulled in by smart people. Okay. That we've got a network of contributors who who will also say, hey, here's why the story is important. Mm -hmm. Or here's mm -hmm. so the top comment is actually going to be by somebody who knows something, instead of your crazy Uncle Fred who is high on your feed because <laughs> mm -hmm. you liked his his pictures at at, at, at his daughter's wedding. Um, and, and then you'll have a little bit of ability to say, hey, give me more yeah. or less of certain types of things. Now, part mm -hmm. of that will be watching you to see what you click on, hmm. right? just like Facebook right. does. And, and so it's, we only it's have a few creepy. more minutes, sure. but I want to know, because I got your report today sure, sure. Oh, on looking top. back on 2017. Right. What do you think in 2018, what do you think is going to be the greatest news that, that oh. if you could think That's the fun thing about news, though. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going to happen. I know. So, you know, so I don't know is the short answer to that. Um, um, what are you looking, what are you keeping your eye on the most, put it that way? I mean, I, I mean, look, the Trump thing has been the most, the most interesting presidential first year we've had in a long time. Um, we had all kind of assumed that that would calm down a little bit, and it certainly hasn't showed any, 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 uh, any, uh, any, any, any nod towards that. So I'm, I'm, the politics will be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, what Erin is asking is, should she buy or sell her cryptocurrency <laughs> for Bitcoin? <laughs> That's what she's really asking. Let's be honest. That's a huge story and a massive conversation happening all over. I'm going to have a very selfish place. Crypto, <laughs> yeah. crypt, no. crypto goes up, crypto goes down. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think it's a smart thing to get 5% of your, of your net worth if you want to and put a little bit into Bitcoin, a little bit into Ethereum, and a little bit some there, and then put it in a sock and come back in a year. Mm -hmm. But you'll freak yourself out if you go, because right. it's going to double and it's going to yeah. go to 10%. I mean, it's going to fly all over. But I think that more people are going to put money into that this year, mm. into, into a closed system, mm -hmm. and therefore it'll be worth it. Uh, Great so, advice. Yeah. Great. So That's the only real prediction I have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, really <laughs> impressed with your work. Beautifully done. And I'm, I'm going to be looking for it because we have to research all the time. I don't know where to go. Yeah. And there's so many different. Well, we started off with, it, with, with the morning. So if you go to the court report, mm -hmm. oh, excuse me. <laughs> that's what we call the, that's what we call the yeah. newsletter. If you go to lacourtnews.com, it talks a little bit about what we're doing, and 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 it's and it can sign you up for the, that morning email, which and is which is basically a two minute brief of if you didn't jump into the news all day. And mm -hmm. we try to keep it in the in in, in the middle and, and try to keep it. Since the first day I met you, Ken, I subscribed and I wake up with it Monday through Friday, oh, and, okay. and I must say I truly enjoy it. I feel more well versed on what's happening. I feel like it's completely unbiased. It's a right. very good, just general understanding of topics that are very relevant to what's mm -hmm. happening in American well, society right, right now. Thank so you. thank you for that. I really well, do appreciate it. So we'd like it. to do one just on LA so that we can just yeah. get it. <laughs> Someday. So, and you don't have to do any research in the morning. You can right. just have yeah. it. So um, we have to take a break and we are going to be coming back. Do you want to introduce Maria? Tell us a little bit about what we yes, get to. Yes, we have Maria. Felipe coming in. She's part of the New World Library family. It's part of my publishing uh, family there. Um, she has done everything in her life. She's been an actress. She was a boxing announcer for a while, a TV host. And now she's got a great book called Live Your Happy. It's all about how to love your life and love yourself. So we're going right. to talk to her when we come back. Yep. Monday through Friday, we are going to be streaming to you live, Los Angeles. America's first live streaming daily talk show. 9 a.m. Pacific time on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Oh, and we have a sexy show for you today. We have got Will, Leanne, and Gabe in the house. Let's Hello. go back up. Hi! Talk to four beautiful, intelligent, conscious women. Clearly, I was miserable the entire time. <laughs> She has a TV show similar to your guys. Oh, I went, wow. yes! Woo! Yes! 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 The little pack. Come on. I feel so bad for Jess. We're live. We're live. For the, the people viewing. Yeah. For the people viewing. Wow! 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 M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E Club Mickey Mouse. Oh, good morning. Wow, wow, wow.
We are streaming to you live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Happy holidays. It's gonna be a good, good morning, morning La La, La, La Land. Land. Five, six, seven, eight. We are the Musketeers, and we proudly wear our ears. We mousing, eh, eh. We mousing, eh, eh. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-C -E for Mickey Mouse. Good morning, La La Land. Maria Felipe. She's an author of Live Your Happy. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, we are so excited. Maria, for coming. You guys are excited. I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> the energy here is like how we say in Spanish, candela. You guys are uh, like on fire here. Yes. Oh my God. It feels so good. It's it sounds very so much happy. better in Spanish, doesn't it? Right? Yeah. yeah. Look at that beautiful dress. Thank you. You know so what I've read is that own. people said you were a champion without rival. How do you say that in Spanish? Una campeona sin rival. Woo! <laughs> it's so, it's so sexy, right? The Spanish language it is so sexy. The Spanish language is just more passionate, you know? It's like you know, it's very salsa dance, so I get the whole yeah, I, she's big I salsa speak dance. in a different language with the Spanish. You guys actually have a lot in common, right? Because you're both reverence. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, both a course of miracle students. Oh wow. Right? Yeah. We all well, sort of I mean, I don't particularly like haven't really it's not my primary, mm -hmm. but I do love Course in Miracles for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. The Course in Miracles is um, it's just a beautiful teaching. It's a spiritual teaching. It's not religious. You know, it's basically yeah. a self-study mm -hmm. program of where you're able to really understand the way your mind works. Wow. You know, either love right. or fear, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit or ego, mm -hmm. depending on the words you love. Very you know, science and, of mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you basically what you're um, you know cultivating in your mind and the voice that you're paying attention to is going to be your experience. Right. So if you're oh. thinking, you know, if you're aligned to the thoughts of love, you're going to your perception, your effect is going to be more loving. Now, Maria, I'd like to think that I'm aligned, but I can't choose the thoughts that come in my head. At least I haven't mastered how to do that. Well, we can begin now. Where <laughs> <laughs> do I start? The time has come. The time has come. <laughs> well, basically, it's just a practice. I feel that um, the mind, of course, the miracle says the mind is, is, is too okay with mind wandering. We have no consistency, no constancy. It's literally cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and not the cereal, okay? <laughs> yeah, my acupuncture tells me I have monkey brain. It's like all yes. over. It's like a monkey in there. It's like, well, well it's not just, and it's not just you. It's just it, in, in this world. This world mm -hmm. is a circus. I don't know. You guys know. You guys have been watching news. You guys were talking about news. It's like a circus. Yeah. 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 I mean, how do you find your happiness in that? Yeah, and and that goes back to the first question you just asked me in regards to how do you. Um, you, you know, your mind, how do you work your mind is basically mm -hmm. you are going to see how you feel. So if you start to feel a little bit uneasy, anxiety, you start to feel it here. You know how your heart kind of like goes like this. You stop yourself and you're like, what am I thinking? Okay, so I'm thinking that I'm not good enough. I'm thinking that I can't get this job. I'm thinking I'm not doing this good enough. And then you stop those thoughts and, and then you choose again. Those thoughts. You, yeah. st you stop it. You literally stop it because the ego is crazy in your mind. And this is not the mm -hmm. e ego that we've been taught in the world. The egoic mind is the mind, it's a part of your mind that is basically fearful and it looks outside for happiness and mm -hmm. it actually wants to sabotage. It thinks you think it's your friend, but it's really not your friend. My it's actually, friend of me. It's actually out to friend kill your happiness. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually out to kill your happiness. So I have a question for you. Yes. For the viewers out there that are looking in, they're saying, how did she do that? How did she, you know, she's, you're going to be a mother soon. Congratulations. You got a book. You've done all these things. You're a minister. You've done, uh, you know, you've 
done all these things that people are going, why and how, what does she do? How did she do this? How, what, what's your personal story around it? How did yeah, you get here? Get here. Yeah. What a, it's, a, it's a great question, I feel, because we all could identify with, with that. Um, there's a chapter in my book that's called, You Are the Love of Your Life. A lot of people ask me, mm -hmm. how did you become the love of your life? And I said, it takes work. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel that, and I just get goosebumps just saying that, I feel that we, we want an easy fix. Um, we, we want to be happy, but not really. You know, when I say not really, it means we don't really want to do the work. Mm -hmm. We don't want to feel our feelings. We want to sedate ourselves. We want to drink. We want to go out. We want to, you know, um, consume Distract. ourselves distractions mm -hmm. and not feel our feelings. So how I got to be able to be where I'm at now, um, I was a self, as many of us, I was a self-help desperation. You know, have <laughs> right. we all been there? Just been desperate. There. Mm -hmm. And you read all these things. Yeah. And then when I got offered to write this book, I said, this book is going to be different. This book is not going to speak to your intellect. It's going to speak to your heart. And it's going to call you in to live it. And what was going on with me is that I wasn't living what I was learning in these books. So I would be like, oh, I am loving. I am love. Oh, kumbaya, all this stuff. Then during the week, I was a hot mess looking for my love outside of myself. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to have like consistency throughout the week or throughout your life from when the morning to you get up to at night, the second within the second, having discipline in your mind to choose love, to choose to see things differently. Wow. So what I did was is that I stopped looking for my happiness and love outside of myself. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped making things outside define me. As an actress, you know, I felt like that defined me. Um, I felt like being in a relationship defined me, my role defined me, and I was like, no, that's wrong. Love defines me. You know, the universe defines me, God defines me, whatever word resonates with you. And I began to recognize, and this took a lot, I began to forgive, even if I didn't want to. I began to take responsibility, even if I didn't want to, because I'm gonna feel better. And then I came to a point that I recognized that um, that constant pursuit of the carrot, that constant pursuit of that goal, that constant pursuit of that accolade or becoming, you know, um, well known or whatever that was, was so elusive. And it was such a, a sad journey mm -hmm. that I'm like, I'm done. I need to recognize I have everything and I lack nothing. Mm -hmm. Seriously, wow. the course mm -hmm. says your function is happiness. Happiness is your inheritance. It's what you are right now. So that's that's true. Happiness is our inheritance. Beautiful. Love that. Thank so you. how do you, how, how would you coach someone or encourage someone to experience that on the inside, in their heart, the way you said, and not just in their mind? Because I know it's easy to repeat it in my mind and say, I am, I don't lack anything. Right. But how do you tell someone to do that so it's a, from a heart-centered place where they experience it consistently? Is there yeah. anything that you would recommend? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the Course of Miracles, all it takes is a little willingness and miracles happen. And the first thing is to be willing. Mm -hmm. um, I say in my book, not little willingness, big willingness, hmm. because this is this is a hard job here. So I say just you just being willing to want to change, you just wanting to be willing to feel different is already going to create a shift. But it's when you're you're resisting that it's when you you don't you really truly don't want to change or you're scared. Um, so I always tell, you know, people, if you want to be happy, you need to cultivate um, that willingness to be like, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with the suffering. Mm -hmm. I'm done with looking for happiness outside of myself. I'm done with the depression. I'm done of believing what the doctor says that I don't have good health. I'm done with all of this. And, and, I, and I want to start to see things differently. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's, it's really a, a, a choice within. You know? I'm tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> yeah. Sick and tired. No, yeah. no, it's really interesting because I could say I'm, I have big willingness, right? Not a little willing, like I'm, I'm seriously willing. I'm not sure if I trust myself. Of course, yeah, I get that. Because I was like that too. I was like, I felt that way too. It's like, mm. I wanted to change, but not really. But I really want to. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, but no, but there's always, just like, so unconscious. There's this unconscious and this sabotage with the ego of guilt that, that yeah, let's say, um, you know, I want to experience a romantic relationship, let's say. Mm -hmm. And, and I want to I want to experience self-love. But behind the scenes, you're not thinking those thoughts. Behind the scenes, you're looking for somebody to complete you. So you're not in alignment. So you want to change, but not really. Because you still want to stick to your old habits. And you still want to... Um, be and cultivating your littleness is what I like to say, your littleness. Oh. 
Sorry. She's like at five. What are you? Five ten? Five eleven? She's like at five eleven. I don't know anything about littleness. Yeah, your littleness is like your fearful self. It's the egoic self as well. You know, it's that part of you that's just very small and and doesn't. It's not expansive. Um, but I, I totally understand what you're saying. It's I, I feel even my clients that I coach are, are like they come and they're like, oh, I want to change, Maria. You know, I really want to change, and and they'll like not do the work. I'll give them work to do mm -hmm. during the week. They'll come back. They won't meditate. They won't do anything because we have no discipline. We want to change, but not really. Right. You know. All I have to say is that okay. I know that it, your book is based on the Course in Miracles, yes. and mm -hmm. this has been such a profound book for me and for so many people in my life and I know that of course Mary Williamson mm -hmm. talks about cute, it yeah but I gotta say that I would be much more likely <laughs> to read your book it's much more succinct this is uh, this is like <laughs> way so I'm just so like proud of you for oh, putting this you. into something that is it's reachable for people yeah, it's accessible so how did you how did you was it hard for you to write your book well, no, I mean, it came from a space of a lot of excitement. You know, I wanted to be able to get the Course in Miracles message out there and make it very practical, very easy, um, call you in to living. It's called Live Your Happy because it's really live a Course in Miracles, but it's mm -hmm. really embody that happiness full time in your life. Mm -hmm. Even even if stuff is hitting the fan outside, like the whole point of the book is for you to be happy regardless of what's going on in form, regardless of what's going on in the world. And She's people speaking would say, speaking, I know, I know. I know. That's why when I walked it's in here, I was like, this yeah. is my family. Right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Oh, I could have oh, oh, right. <laughs> written this book on this couch, you know, uh, with inspiration. So somebody out there that wants to write a book, mm -hmm. they want to live their truth. They want to do Course in Miracles. They want to begin to embody this work, but they go, Okay, I just want to write my own book. Like that's they're looking at you right now going, I want what she has. Yes. And I want to write a book because so many people do. what what would you recommend for them for writing a book? Well, I mean, for me it's the first thing is to let go of the attachment of wanting to write a book and making it matter. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's it. You know, I mean, I feel that a lot of us we have all these goals and we want to write a book and we 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 want to accomplish something, but as, as soon as you start to let go of, of of it mattering or it defining you like oh I want to do this, it's more like let me give it over, let me give it over to my true self, let me give it the of course of miracles says give it over to Holy Spirit and say Holy Spirit I give you this desire to write a book, um, but I don't know what's the highest and best for me. I want the will of love, you know, yeah. which is will of God. I don't want my will because what my will always gets me into trouble because I don't know what's the highest and best for me. See, it's such oh, a powerful just point. Give it over. So, yeah. and we talked about this a little bit during the break, and I want you to speak to this a little bit in terms of when you do that, when you let go, you prioritize happiness and peace, and you prioritize love. Talk about some of the experiences that you've had where successes have just come to you, or things have unfolded mm. organically and easily. This is his entire yes. filter. Yes, it is. is because it's so <laughs> undervalued. And you have really powerful experiences yeah. sort of demonstrating that, right? Even with the book. Yeah, and yeah. I love that you said that it is so undervalued. You know, um, I feel that in society, in this society, it's backwards. We're taught like we need to struggle, we need to make things happen, we need to manipulate, we need to control, you know, we need to stick our hand in there and make it happen. Um, I always say easy is normal. Hmm. You know, we're taught that hard is normal, going and achieving ah, is, is like the mantra. struggles. I say, no, yeah. easy is normal. And um, how, how it is, is basically you, you, you start to cultivate trust. And I'm not saying the trust that the world has taught us, like, I trust you because you've been a good girl and you look like an angel, right? <laughs> no, it's... No, she does. <laughs> no, she, does. <laughs> she clearly doesn't know me. <laughs> but, the, but this white dress, she looks very angelic, she so does. you know what? I'm going to trust her, you know? Um, but basically, it's trusting your inner guidance. Mm -hmm. That the, the book and The Course in Miracles, oh. basically, the point of the, of these these tools is to bring, your back, bring you back to your inner guidance. Mm -hmm. We have an inner guidance system, which is the Holy Spirit, that knows exactly what to say, what to do, how to be. It's just the cuckoo voice, which I say talks a lot of caca, which is, you know, is cuckoo, by the way. Um, <laughs> new spiritual language around here. Um, you start to quiet that voice and you trust and you trust. And um, what happens is you start to get out of your own way and things come to you easily, um, such as the book. You know, I, I just telling him that I, it was basically a Facebook post. Um, I had drank, you know, a glass of Pinot Noir and I was a little giddy. And I wrote a really nice post that I thought could be in a book. And I put excerpt from my book. Um, you know, an uh, agent reached out to me and he wow. asked me about my book. And I told him, well, I didn't have a book. Plus I have dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. And I, I said, Pinot Noir, but I didn't have a book. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you asked me, how do people get a book deal? Pinot Noir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pinot Noir, dyslexia, 
It's so mind blowing that. that. We have we ran out of time. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. And we, have the we could just go on and on, yes. and, and we want you to be part of our family here because you clearly are. We're one. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're we one. Are one. Miracles. We are we're one. Miracles. Yeah, it'd be great to get together and just right? share more so about happiness. How can people find you? Um, Right here right. on the <laughs> land. Omnipresent. <laughs> Omnipresent. <laughs> well, um, well, basically on Facebook, on my handles, you know, mm -hmm. at Rev Maria Felipe, and I have a great YouTube channel called Maria Coconut TV, where I just to give a lot of inspirational free videos on there. And my husband has created an amazing website, uh, MariaFelipe.org. That we love. Very Shout interactive. out to all love the great it. husbands. Yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Be behind behind every great leader and woman, there's an amazing man. There you go. Yeah. And there That's he right. is. So uh -huh. definitely check that out. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. So we're Thank so you. excited to follow you, and I want to look at your book and all that great stuff. So uh, stay tuned, you guys. We are going to, um, we're bouncing out today, but tomorrow we've got. Oh, my gosh. We have Lori Harder, uh -huh. one of my good friends. She also talks about happiness. She talks um, about how to earn your happy. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, it's a slightly different um, take, but she's just full of love, and we're going to talk about dating and relationships. Dating, relationships, and Lord. love. I've got, like, a cougar outfit tomorrow, so Don't I'm bringing it on. <laughs> and I'm not a cougar. See? Yeah. Angel today, <laughs> double tomorrow. I see right? what's happening. That's where it's going, right? And duality. So, um, just take us out. We are streaming to you live Monday through Friday is America's first live streaming daily lifestyle talk show on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now on Periscope. It's going to be a good morning, La La Land. Have a great day, you guys.